Hi, welcome back to Artsy Squirrels. I'm Rebecca, the artsy of the squirrels. Grab your coffee and your sketchbook as we dive in to our next story time. So today, I wanted to branch off from the standard story time and share a little more of my process verbally before sharing a quick anecdote about a couple of deliveries that really stuck in my memory from my time working as a florist. Let's start with choosing my subject matter. This is always the hardest part for me. Now, I don't know how many of you are artists or like to paint or just sketch or doodle, but if you've ever sat down, turned on a video camera and said, okay, what am I going to create today? Your brain will literally just stop. You may have had some good idea when you sat down or just thought, oh, there's tons of things I love to paint, but you'll your brain will just completely blank. And that pretty much happens to me most times I walk into my studio, because while I love to create, and there are times where I can't get a specific painting or an idea out of my head, I will walk through that door, and unless I'm going in there for a specific reason, my brain just stops. And then I sit down, and I just, this, this right here. I I blank. So, because of that, I just sort of thought, well, maybe I can narrow it down. I knew I wanted to do some sort of impressionist style, some tutorials I looked at, and I came across this lovely piece that I did in acrylic, and it was a little water lily landscape scene. It was really basic and just a nice, simple element. There was the water, there was the water lily with the reflection, a little bit of greenery, a little bit of sky. And I thought, you know what, this is perfect. I really love this piece in acrylic, but I'd love to see what I can do with it in watercolor. So that's sort of where we got to this point. Okay, I've chosen a subject matter. I have a reference image in my previous piece to go off of. Now let's start building it. Well, what's the most important element to start with? The water lily. I love the way it looks. I knew I wanted to have a nice reflection. The water lily and the water, I feel like you're gonna be able to tell, are my main priorities in this piece. Now let's get into those delivery stories I was talking about earlier. The thing about deliveries is they're always bound to have stories because they catch people in what I like to call those in-between moments. That moment when you're shifting from one task to another task and your brain is just a little out of sorts. So whenever you're delivering something, A knock on the door, a ring on the doorbell tends to cause one of these in-between moments. And because of that, people tend to act a little bit more odd than I feel like they would normally. Or at least that's my thought process. Because if I didn't have that thought process, then for whatever reason, their behavior would be normal to them. And I find that much more alarming. So before I get into my actual stories, let me go ahead and give you a little bit of background of the shop and the type of people we would be encountering in this situation. My shop was located in a very posh neighborhood, lots of multi-million dollar estates. That kind of situation is what we're looking at. So my first delivery story is not really a yeller or a screamer. Neither of these are. So if you're looking for one of those, sorry about you. This one is just beyond awkward, or at least for me. I take my arrangement, I put it in the back of my little Ford Focus, because that's what I was driving at the time, and I head to the property. It's one of those properties that is a gated property, so you have to be buzzed in. So I drive up, push the button, hi, this is Rebecca with XYZ Flowers, I have a delivery for John. Silence. And then the gate just opens before me, all very dramatic and to be honest it doesn't get old it always feels kind of cool and I travel down their very long driveway and they have this little parking area in front of the house and I notice a man standing on the front steps perfect he's waiting for me awesome I park and before I know it this pack of dogs comes bounding towards my car and they are congregating at my door and they are just tails a wagon hyper and i'm looking at the guy watching me for any sort of reaction for him to call him back for him to yell hey don't worry they're fine they'll just lick on you 
something, some indicator about what I need to be doing with these dogs. Because there's like five of them. And two of them, it bears mentioning, are Great Pyrenees. For those who don't know what a Great Pyrenees is, they are massive, giant snowballs that are 100 pounds on the conservative end. So, yeah. Fortunately, I grew up with English Mastiffs who were also around 100 pounds on the conservative end. Actually, no, they're like 150 on the conservative end. Either way, I grew up with large dogs. So, of the people to deal with this situation, I'm probably a good one just because I know that most large dogs are very gentle. But I still want to be careful because let's face it, nobody wants to get mauled by a 100 pound dog. So I unroll the window, put my fingers outside, let them sniff. All very consistent behavior, tails wagging, all just battling to get a sniff at my fingertips. So I take a breath, roll up my window, and slowly start to get out of the car. And they are just hopping on me and licking me and they just want lovings. Somehow I managed to get myself out of the car in the arrangement out of my back seat with it intact and without a dog actually physically in my car. Not for lack of trying. So I get that done and I turn back and he's just standing there, same expression, just watching. Okay, then I walk up and I reach out to hand him the arrangement. He grabs the arrangement, turns on his heel, goes back inside. Not a word, not a nod, not any type of acknowledgement. To be honest, I was so taken aback that I forgot that I needed a signature. But cue to five to ten seconds later, I'm shaking my head and like, oh right, I have a, you know, job to do. So I go, knock on the door. Hey, I need a signature. 20 seconds pass, door opens, he looks at me, holds out his hand. That's it. Awkwardly hand him the paperwork, he signs it, hands it back to me, closes the door. Once again, I'm left just standing there for a second, just a bit befuddled. And I turn around, go to my car, give puppy scritches, try valiantly to get in my car without a dog. I did succeed, though one of them came close. Go back to the shop, and on the way back, I'm just running scenarios, right? Why would this situation have occurred? It wasn't like a bad situation where I was hurt or injured or something, but it was just such a weird experience that I needed to have a solution. Was he mute? Was it just a socially awkward situation? Which... I don't think it was because he looked incredibly self-assured the entire time. And for those of you who think it might have been like a sympathy arrangement type situation, no, it wasn't. I always make sure I note those ones because that's really hella uncomfortable and I'm always really understanding during those ones because most people can't function. So it's always very carefully noted. This was not a sympathy arrangement. So I go back to the shop, talk to our owner, and she knows John. John's a nice guy. John's a completely normal guy. What? A completely normal guy who literally pretended like I did not exist. I could have been a ghost delivered. No, I feel like he would have responded to a ghost. I feel like he saw the arrangement fly from my car into his hands and he was like, oh, this is how this works and goes inside. Because at no point did he ever seem to register physically that I was a human being doing a job. Whatever. So clearly there's a reason why this one has stuck in my mind. My second one is also not a screaming or yelling or crying one. It's mostly just a really cute one. But it looks like we've run out of time. So I guess we'll have to save it for another video. Until then, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.